So let's go in the next case. So it's another vertical case and the time is really running. We have already 45 minutes. And uh, yeah, so let's go into the next case, but um, I hope you're same excited as I am. So a small vertical case, uh, nothing severe, but uh, again, I think a very nice uh, indication for using the semilunar technique. As you remember, uh, we are going now to um, this area and the retromolar area, and we are collecting the bone from there. And you see here just the animation, how it might look like. You have to do a CBCT before, you have to measure the distance to the nerve because you need your safety distance. And uh, yeah, then you're taking your shells, and these shells can uh, should be thinned out again. Uh, the shells are same important like uh, the chips in the end. Another thought process, because in my opinion, I mean, to use this strafan with the protector is the logical consequence to the safe scraper. What do I mean with that? If you would look now at these uh, scrapings, which we are winning from the scraper, they are also like a half moon because we are using muscle force and it's also rounded. So when you uh, look at these shells, I mean, uh, they are also having this half moon form. But of course, for getting bigger shells, you have to use a drill. So you can't do this with muscle force anymore unless you're maybe Hulk or Superman. So I think it's a logical consequence um, Yeah, after the safe scraper. So and you see here, um, yeah, after scraping, you really have this uh, nice rounded form. And uh, you will see now the chips partially collected from the shells, which are more white. Also make sure that your, um, your, your shells and your chips are always stored in saline. And uh, yeah, so um, again, you have seen this um, animation before. I mean, now I want to share just a hypothesis, just an idea. Of course, much more research has to be done. But I think when we are, instead of having these straight edge plates, as you have seen it before in the case, when we replace them now by these semi-lunar shells, which have this nice rounding, that we have a more safe closure, that we really have a nice adaption of the soft tissue on that. So my hypothesis is that the exposure rate with these rounded shells is even smaller than with the uh, uh, normal plates, you can say. But of course, I can't say it yet. It's um, yeah. So just a hypothesis and um, more research has to be done. And also, um, yeah, multi-center stu studies are planned. And uh, if you are joining maybe, uh, yeah, our education, so we might even do some uh, research here together. And you see now our, um, yeah, first rounded shell occlusally and uh, filling the space with the chips, always same concept, then filling, um, the, um, yeah, or placing our shell on the buckle side. You see, so sorry when I'm so fascinated of that, but uh, if me, if I wouldn't be so uh, excited about that, me as the, uh, the, the inventor of that, who else would be? So, but I really like it. Um, yeah, how you see this uh, this uh, light reflection even on that. When I shared these cases first time, nobody believed me that this is autogenous bone because it looks it looks kind of artificial. But now you know how we get it because yeah, they are actually collected with the tray fine. So the nice thing is also all the um, or most of the mistakes you can done. I told you before cannot be done when also using uh, the semilunar technique. That means uh, because we cannot go deeper than two millimeter, we also have a less risk for the danger zone. So we cannot use wrong angles because, um, yeah, this is uh, already, um, yeah, with the trail not possible. Crossing lines is not necessary. Too thick block is not necessary because we skip the block and we go right to the plate. Splitting is not needed. Uh, sharp edges can still be there. That means still you have to round off also if you find some edges, but of course you have seen the form, it's already much more rounded. So maybe 90% more rounded than a normal plate. And uh, yeah, when we go now back to, um, yeah, this case after three to four months. So you see here that um, the results are always nice. And uh, I'm sure you have seen already many of those cases with a, a shell technique uh, working with the split bomb technique in uh, social media or from other speakers. I mean, in my opinion, there's no way around. Every one of you who wants to become an expert or who is already an expert needs a torsion's bone in your toolbox because otherwise you will never be able to handle more complicated cases. You see again, these nice blood vessels. Uh, this is real bone. Of course, you have to give now, now function loading. If you leave it now uh, six or eight uh, months, 
you will also um, see resorption process. That means the function loading is uh, crucial. We can remove now the screws. Again, these are the titanium mini screws, are anodized. That's why they also look so golden. You see the quality of the bone, not comparable to the bone powder, um, yeah, or substitute powder, let's better to say, uh, we, we are used when doing GBR technique. We collect all these chips, remember, think autogenous and uh, yeah, placing then the implants. Still, it's a vertical bone augmentation, place them uh, at least one and a half millimeter deep. Remember, after 10 years, we are facing some bone resorption, but it's uh, still compared to all other materials, very, very small. So remember, so on average 0 0.75 millimeter, less than one millimeter. And uh, yeah, so second stage surgery done with the epical reposition flap, one of our eight techniques uh, from our education. It's a nice technique um, for shifting the keratinized mucosa to the buccal side. Everyone should also have this in uh, your toolbox. And final result, simple, yeah, straightforward case, uh, prosthetically not uh, very challenging.